Hi, my name is Professor Marissa Largo. I'm an assistant professor in creative technologies. And today I'm going to show you how to use a sewing machine for some very basic sewing projects. So the first thing you want to make sure is that your machine is on. There's an on switch on the side. And so we have these beautiful brunette machines in the makerspace, in the library makerspace. And so you'll find that there's a digital display which um, turns on as soon as you hit the on switch. And there are many uh, options here. There's a straight stitch, a zigzag stitch, buttonholes. Uh, these functions control the, the length of the stitch. And so this particular model is very intuitive in that you can essentially just select the type of stitch that you'd like to work with. For the purposes of beginners, you know, starting off with a very simple project, a straight stitch is just fine. So we'll start with the straight stitch. And uh, the first thing that we will do is to load up our bobbin. Um, a bobbin is the source for the string at the very bottom of the sewing machine. It rests right below the needle. And there's another source of string. It's the spool that's at the top of the machine. So we're going to load up the bobbin. Um, and a bobbin looks like this. It's a small, small spool. It's usually made out of plastic or metal. And it has small holes at the top and at the bottom. So today I'm sewing with yellow fabric and so I'll grab yellow thread so that it matches with my fabric and so the stitch doesn't become so obvious. Load it up onto the spindle, add the locking mechanism, take the thread, draw it through the metal element here and I'm going to take the very end of the thread and draw it through the top hole of the plastic bobbin. I mount it on this metal post and I push it all the way to the right and that activates bobbin mode. So you'll see on the digital display a bobbin and the, um, and the pedal. And so that's essentially giving me directions on how to load the bobbin. So I'm going to hold the end of the thread just to ensure that it doesn't come undone or get tangled. And I'm going to press on the pedal. And so as you can see, it is winding thread around my bobbin. You can do a lot more, of course, um, but for the purposes of our demonstration, that will do. I'm going to take some sewing scissors and snip the top, the excess, and then snip it from the rest of the spool. I move, I move the post directly to the left and that disengages the bobbin uh, activation. And so now it, it's into sewing mode. And as you can see on the screen, I've got my straight stitch and I'm ready to sew. So I place the bobbin in, in this carriage underneath the needle. And I draw this to the left hand side. I take the plastic cover, insert it back in, and press it back into place. Okay, back at the top of the machine, I take the thread, and now I'm going to thread the sewing machine. And on the sewing machine, there are these really helpful arrows that show you the direction as to where the thread needs to go. So it goes around this element, downwards, up again, Make sure that it gets inserted into this metal hook. Down again. And through this metal hook that's near the needle, I'm going to raise the needle by turning this knob and insert the thread through the eye of the needle and draw it through. I take the end of the thread and bring it down between the, the foot, the presser foot, and I take the string 
And so at this point here, I have the two ends of each of the strings, the string on the bobbin and the string on the top. And I'm just going to gently press the pedal. And this is essentially looping the two threads together. So I just did a couple of stitches, and that should do the trick. Okay, so this is all threaded up, and this is ready to sew. So I'm going to take a look at my fabric and some common tools that I need for sewing. Here I have my cutting mat. So this is really helpful for cutting fabric. I've got a ruler. I've got a rotary blade, which is fantastic for piecework, for cutting fabric. It's, it's really quite sharp, so this is very effective. I've got my sewing scissors and pins. Pins are essential in keeping your fabric together as you're sewing. I also have this really helpful tool. This is called a seam ripper. It kind of looks like a lobster claw. So if you make errors and you want to redo a seam, you can use this little tool to undo that work and start again. Uh, for beginners, a really great fabric to start off with is 100% cotton or a cotton polyester blend. Um, and, but I'll, I'll use this for my demonstration. And so when you're sewing, you want to make sure that the good sides are facing each other. And we do this so that when we're finished sewing, we invert it and you don't see your seams. So I'm going to take the two pieces of fabric, make sure that the good sides are facing inwards, and I'm going to use pins to ensure that my fabric doesn't shift around as I'm sewing. So I'm going to insert a pin every few centimeters. As I'm sewing, I want to make sure that the machine doesn't go over the pins because that might lead to broken pins and pins going into people's eyes. So we want to try to avoid that as much as possible. And I'm just applying my pins all around the project. Okay. So I've got my yellow thread. My machine's ready to go. I'm going to start at the tip of the heart and I'm going to position it right at the front of the needle. And then the lever, this black leather controls the, the presser foot and I'm going to lower it onto the fabric. So as I'm sewing, I want to make sure that the presser foot is aligned with the edge of the fabric. So with my foot on the pedal, my right hand guiding my work, and my other hand guiding the, the, the loose threads, I'm going to ease onto the pedal very slowly and start sewing. Before I reach a pin, I'm going to remove it and continue sewing. As I encounter the curve of the shape, I slow down and then I just pivot the fabric ever so lightly. So that my sewing follows the contours of the shape. In some cases, you may want to lift the presser foot and pivot the fabric even more. At the middle of the heart, I'm going to stop right there and then lift up the footer again and then turn it almost 90 degrees.
For beginner sewers, you want to take this really slow. A good analogy is like driving. So if you step on the gas, you might lose some control. So you just want to take it nice and easy when you're starting off. Just before I reach the end, I'm going to leave about an inch of space unstitched. And that's to allow me to invert the project so I can have the seam hidden. At this point, what I'm going to do is a back stitch. And so a back stitch basically reinforces the stitch. There's an arrow here, and it looks like a curved arrow. And I press that down as I press the pedal uh, back down for maybe two or three stitches. And that's essentially reinforcing my stitch so that it doesn't come undone. So at this point, I'm just going to run the needle off of the project for about 10 centimeters. So I have 10 centimeters of slack. And on the side of the machine is a blade. It's a blade that's encased by plastic. And so rather than reaching for my scissors, I can simply use this mechanism to cut my thread. And so there I have it. I have my, my two hearts sewn together. I take my sewing scissors and remove the excess string. So it looks something like this. You'll also notice that there is space between the edge of the fabric and the stitch. And so that's something that we call seam allowance. So as you're cutting your fabric and thinking through your project, you always want to make sure you have extra fabric to account for that seam allowance. So what I'll do here is I'll invert it and you can use a pencil or a marker to help you invert the fiddly bits. And what I can do afterwards is I can stuff this with polyfill and, and then sew close to the enclosure um, so that I can have um, a, a small little stuffed heart project. So it looks something like this. And if I'm in creative technologies, I might want to include electronic components like diodes or um, sound elements on voice recorders that get inserted into the stuffy. Uh, but that's essentially a basic sewing project using the sewing machines that we have here at the Library Makerspace. I hope this inspires you to, uh, to take up your own uh, DIY projects. The beauty of Makerspace culture is the belief that you can do it, that you can make it yourself. You're not simply a consumer, you're also a maker. You're a critical maker. You can make beautiful things and interesting things using the tools that we have around us. So thank you once again and happy sewing.